Hi, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about our work, Trust Boost, about boosting trust among interoperable blockchains. This is a joint work with ShareChow, Kotic, ShareM, and Promote. Over the past few decades, the blockchain ecosystem has grown rapidly with emergence of more than a thousand layer one blockchains, most of which operate independently with their own protocols and trust levels. As this ecosystem continues to evolve, a trend toward interoperability among these networks is increasingly apparent. Cross-chain bridges and platforms are gaining traction, allowing for greater flexibility to move funds within the multi-chain cryptoverse. And they also enable users to leverage the strengths of different blockchains. One of the most basic cross-chain applications is token exchange. Let's consider a simple example where Bob on the Binance blockchain plans to exchange the Binance coin for ETH. To initiate this exchange, Bob must first lock his tokens in a smart contract and the Binance chain, then he must use this proof to mint wrap tokens on Ethereum, and finally exchange them for ETH on a DEX. And the security of this action relies on the assumption that the trust levels of both chains are equivalent. However, if one of the chains is compromised after the exchange, the transaction used to lock the tokens might be reverted and Bob could successfully receive it for free. Therefore, it's crucial to consider the chains with relatively weaker security when building cross-chain applications. One common way of weak or new blockchains to attain the desired level of security is to borrow trust from established secure chains. This can be achieved through uh, various methods such as becoming a sidechain or through checkpointing in which the state of the new blockchain is periodically submitted to a more established one. However, in exchange for this trust, this new chains relinquish some degree of their individual sovereignty. They must adhere to the rules and regulations set by the main chain, thus exerting less control over their own network. So a critical question arises, without relying on any highly secure blockchain, how can these weaker blockchains collaborate to create a combined ledger that still achieves enhanced security? Importantly, it's ideal that trust boosting operations can be offered in a lightweight way, such as being implemented through smart contracts without the need to modify the consensus layer. Moreover, the protocol should be highly configurable, allowing participants to customize their desired trust level. For example, high value transactions may require higher levels of security, which could come with a cost of like, higher fees or latency. And formally, let's define this problem by consider, considering a scenario where there exist M blockchain ledgers, among which up to F are considered 40, meaning their security and liveness cannot be guaranteed. And the problem is, can we combine these ledgers in such a way that consensus can be reached on this combined ledger? And it is important to clarify what consensus means in this context. There are two types of participants involved in the protocol, validators and clients. While the validators strive to reach consensus on the states of each individual blockchain, clients are the ones concerned with consensus on this combined ledger. And we assume that each blockchain has its own security threshold. So 40 blockchains are those where the number of Byzantine validators exceeds the threshold. However, we allow for any number of Byzantine clients, though only the non faulty ones agree on the same state of the combined ledger. And to discuss the conditions for reaching consensus among individual ledgers, we need to consider two different communication models, passive and active. First, in the passive mode, we say the ledgers cannot communicate with each other 
and the clients can only observe the states of each ledger but cannot forward the messages. In this situation, we prove that the cons consensus is impossible in the presence of even one single faulty ledger. And the proof idea is similar to the proof of FLP impossibility, uh, which basically states that deterministic asynchronous consensus in is impossible with even a single fault. Although consensus is impossible in this mode, we can still construct a combined ledger that achieves a relaxed notion of consensus. This does not provide total ordering and guarantees termination only for honest tra transactions. This relaxation is based on the understanding that adversarial parties do not need to uh, have any guarantees. If they just submit to conflicting transactions such as double spend, it's likely that neither transactions will be committed and the funds may be lost. So we propose a trustable slide protocol in this passive mode that meets the definition and can be used to construct a more secure payment chains on top of the existing weaker blockchains. And the impossibility result indicates that the communication is needed to reach consensus. Thus, in the active mode, we assume the existence of this cross-chain communication primitive that allows independent, uh, independent blockchains to communicate with each other. And in practice, there are various CCC protocols, such as IBC in Cosmos, XEM in Pogdot, and CCIP is in Chainlink. And furthermore, we denote uh, the local consensus protocols used by all constituent blockchains as our second primitive, where different blockchains may use different protocols to build their own ledgers. Then as the basic building blocks, CCC provides two interfaces for blockchains to send and deliver messages, specifying the source, the destination, and the data to be sent. Then the local consensus protocols of Ledger also provide two common interfaces, one for submitting transactions and the other for returning the commitment status of a transaction, sometimes along with a proof of commitment. Then from the client's perspective, Trustboost provides the same interface as any local consensus protocol. Let's consider an example in an application contract uh, that manages the NAM services. And on the left, in a single chain case, when the client uh, wants to register a NAM, it simply uses the submit interface and waits for the transaction to be committed. Then in a cross-chain case, the Trust Boost protocol coordinates interactions among the local ledgers through this CCC primitive. And on each blockchain, uh, the cross-chain version of NERM service contract and another Trust Boost contract are deployed. Then the messages are exchanged according to the consensus protocol used to instantiate Trust Boost. For example, in some leader-based protocol, the transaction may be first submitted to a leader chain and later proposed to other chains for several phases of voting. And informally, analogies between the blockchains with CCC and validators with authenticated channels can imply the boosted security of global ledger. First, we observe that each blockchain in TrustBoost behave the same as a single validator. For instance, using some quorum-based BFD protocols, blockchains with an honest supermajority will not equivocate will be, and will behave honestly. While the faulty blockchains can behave arbitrarily, such as a double voting. We also observe that the CCC primitive provides blockchains a communication channel for uh, reliable delivery and message authentication. So for consensus protocols that use signatures, uh, the proof of commitment serves as the signature of a blockchain. If the local consensus doesn't provide finality, 
then we need a like client to verify the blockchain states. And in this way, the problem of global consensus over the blockchains is reduced to traditional consensus over validators. And we can instantially trust boost with any BFT protocols to securely construct a combined ledger with total order rate. And the above reduction demonstrate that in theory, uh, building consensus on top of consensus is possible. However, what is the cost of implementing such a system in practice? To test this practicality of the method, we build and uh, deploy the Trust Boost in a Cosmos ecosystem. Cosmos is a platform that aims to provide us uh, to build a decentralized network of interoperable blockchains. So it allows users to easily create their own blockchains using the provided SDK. And moreover, it inherently supports cross-chain communication through the IBC protocol. So it provides us an ideal environment to uh, build and deploy the Trust Boost. We then selected the sta uh, state-of-the-art partial synchronous BFT protocol known as information theoretical host of to instantiate our Trust Boost protocol. We choose this uh, due to a limitation of the IBC protocol, which cannot pass the proof of commitment of the underlying tenement consensus protocol to the smart contract layer. Therefore, we needed a protocol that does not use PKI. Additionally, uh, the smart contract programming has its limitations. For example, uh, it is single-threaded and does not support timeouts. To address these issues, we established external bots to regularly pin the blockchains, triggering the timeouts as needed. And importantly, we make no assumptions, trust assumptions about these bots, so they can be replaced by third-party keeper services. Then we conducted experiments on a group of local chains on an AWS instance. Essentially, our goal was to understand the trade-off between the security and cost, as well as how Trust Boost scales in terms of the performance. Then, by comparing the evaluation results we have of Trust Boost running on various number of local chains to a single chain execution, we found that the number of IBC messages and the gas usage scaled quadratically. This is because the protocol IT hall stuff has quadratic communication complexity. And in terms of the cost, uh, the gas used for 10 blockchains was roughly two to $10. Uh, this is calculated based on the gas price and exchange rate of the Cosmos ecosystem at the time of running the experiments. And this cost is acceptable since we will compare them to some high, uh, high secure blockchains such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. And based on these results, we identify some techniques that could be used to reduce the overhead. Firstly, it's important to note that the gas usage primarily comes from two, source, two sources. While the cost of application contract is uh, unavoidable because they have to replicate it on each blockchain, but the cost of trust boost contract can be amortized through batching. Additionally, uh, we see the performance of trust boost is constrained by the efficiency of IBC protocol. So enhancing the transmission and execution of IBC messages would greatly improve the performance. Finally, in conclusion, the primary objective of this work was to construct a blockchain with stronger security guarantees by leveraging uh, a group of blockchains with varying security levels. And we first approached this problem from a theoretical perspective, discussing the necessary primitives for our solution. And then uh, we demonstrated that by implementing Trust Boost as a proxy contract for those single chain applications, we can achieve higher security levels at a reasonable cost. 
Then moving forward, there are several interesting directions to improve the practicality. Improving the efficiency of the cross-chain communication is an active area. And we can also explore the possibility of designing the new BFT protocols, uh, which can be optimized for smart contract programming in terms of the number of cross-chain messages and the network connectivity. So uh, thank you very much for your time. And I'd be happy to discuss any questions.